I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy and in this video I'm taking it outside in the beautiful spring to help answer that one question that's been plaguing quilters for generations. I'm going to give you tips and tricks for quilting nine patch quilt blocks. Let's get to it. And in this video, we're not going to tackle a specific quilt. We're going to tackle a specific quilt block. I'm going to give you tips and ideas for how to quilt nine patch quilts. I'm also going to tell you all about a new book I have coming out, and I'll give you more information about this video's resource sheet. The nine patch quilt block is a very common block. In fact, it was the very first quilt block I ever learned how to make. How you quilt those nine patch blocks really depends on the blocks themselves. I can't give you a one size fits all type of quilting design because each block is a little different. When you're looking at your quilt first, ask yourself, is this a standalone nine patch or is it a foundational block? What I mean is the nine patch by itself or is it part of a bigger block? Because how I'm gonna treat those will be a little bit different. In a standalone nine patch block, I'm probably gonna use continuous curve like I did in this modern X quilt. Now this is actually a free pattern I designed for the Midnight Quilt Show and Craftsy and you can find the information about that in the description box below. And okay, it's not really a nine patch, it's a 16 patch, but it's the same kind of thing, right? I especially love the continuous curve. If I'm not wanting to create a secondary design with the quilting, or I'm not wanting to highlight one color fabric over the other. You're gonna see this over and over again in this video because it's such a handy design for those nine patch blocks and other blocks as well. If free motion quilting isn't really your thing, or you're just wanting to get the quilt done quickly, you can quilt straight lines that go from corner to corner. And you can even combine those with the continuous curve to give it a different look. Now in the resource sheet that I'll tell you about at the end, I'll show you that you don't have to quilt each one of these blocks by itself. In fact, you can quilt that whole big block without starting and stopping. More often than not, the nine patch block will probably be a foundation block or part of a bigger block. If that's the case, I'm gonna use the quilting to help tie all those elements together. For instance, in this particular quilt, which has that bright, cheery, retro look to it, in these particular blocks, they're part of a bigger picture, a bigger overall quilt, and so I wanted to use the quilting to kind of create those secondary designs. And like the Modern X, it's not necessarily a nine patch block, but you get the basic idea, right? By using echoing and wishbones to continue the design from the cornered blocks to the nine patch, or really 16 patch, it almost makes the quilting look like it's going behind the prints, and I kind of like that woven look to it. But if you don't want to think about it that much, no worries, you can do straight lines. And using your walking foot, you can incorporate the piecing around the nine patch or 16 patch and create that secondary pattern, which looks really fun. And that's what I did in this other version of the Scrambled Plus quilt. And just in case you think that I only like retro kind of fabrics, this quilt looks equally as stunning in solids like it is here in the blue and white fabric. This is another quilt I made on an episode of the Midnight Quilt Show. It's also another free pattern and it's jelly roll friendly. So you can find that also in the description box below. Let's look at the next quilt. In this orange quilt, the nine patch blocks are in the corners of a bigger block. I use straight line quilting to kind of continue it around the corner. By working with just a few of the blocks around the outside, then I quilted the rest of it like a four patch in the center. When you step back, it really lets you see that secondary design and how fun it looks. Here's a blue quilt that's just like it, but the same basic idea, using those straight lines to go around the corner and then quilting the four patch, except this time I quilted it with big wishbones and treated it like one block. Honestly, this is one of the hardest things to teach in a class. How do I know which blocks I wanna combine and create that secondary design. I kind of stand back and look at the quilt and I imagine where those lines would go if they continued on. Or you could try drawing it out or sketching it out and see if you can come up with some really fun secondary designs in those nine patch blocks. Now, whether or not it's a standalone block or a foundational block, I'm still gonna take color placement into consideration. For instance, if it's your traditional nine patch fabric placement where you have five of one color and four of the other, I'd quilt it slightly differently than I would a different layout. For instance, let's take that traditional fabric placement into consideration. When I'm quilting quilts, I love to let the fabric guide me in my quilting selections. Now, this quilt pattern is called Poppy and it has that traditional nine patch fabric placement. I quilted all the darker gray with the continuous curve and then did something a little more angular in the other colors. As I was preparing my quilt samples for this lecture, I realized I have a lot of examples of continuous curve with the pointy design in the other colors. In this quilt pattern, appropriately titled three, because of the three nine patch blocks, I did the same exact thing. Using the continuous curve in the white and the pointy dot to dot quilting designs in the other colors. As a bonus, it's actually easy to quilt. You can do the whole thing without starting and stopping. But if there's a different fabric placement, I'm gonna quilt it slightly differently, putting the attention and the emphasis on the one different color. In this quilt called Color Blocks, the nine patch block actually consists of eight gray squares and a pop of color in the middle of each one. Around the outside, I went with a continuous curve 
and then in the center, a dot to dot design just to give it a more angular look and to make it look a little different than the rest of the quilt. And as if you didn't have enough to think about, you also want to take into consideration the size of the quilt blocks. If all those squares are tiny, there's not a whole lot I can do. In the color block quilt designed by Carl Hench, these nine patches were pretty small. My hand next to the quilt block gives you a good idea how teeny tiny those individual squares are. I just quilted it as one block using the grid of the nine patch as a guide. It was a lot easier than quilting those itty bitty pieces all separately. And in this dark and light blue nine patch block, I treated it as one block, one square, by quilting the straight lines that echoed my way into the center. But if the nine patch is larger, that gives me a little bit more room to play and experiment with quilting designs. How about this quilt block from the iridescence quilt pattern? Since the blocks were a little larger, I had room to add a different continuous curve detail in the corners. I like how it makes it look kind of florally, almost like a motif. Speaking of continuous curve motifs, in this particular quilt called Medallion, the blocks are not only bigger, they're differently shaped. The very center of the quilt has that nine patch block that has rectangles, a smaller one, and then the four larger pink squares. Using that continuous curve that we already saw in the iridescence quilt, I just added a few more petals to it to really fill in that area. Now, sometimes you'll come across a quilt that has small and big nine patch blocks. Don't let that be overwhelming. It's actually pretty easy to quilt. Just pick designs that are easy to change up. For example, in this quilt called Camo, the nine patch blocks are varying sizes. I could either treat the smaller nine patch as one block, or I could add a little bit more detail for the bigger blocks to fill in the space. Now, when you're looking at your nine patch quilts, whether it's solid, whether it's prints, large or small, the most important thing isn't that you use continuous curve or that you quilt it perfectly. The most important thing is that you finish it. And the best way to finish a quilt is to get started. Now, why all the talk about nine patches all of a sudden? Well, it is a block near and dear to my heart because that's the first block that my husband's grandpa taught me how to make. I love it so much, I teamed up with a friend of mine, Jennifer Dick, who co-authored Nine Patch Revolution with me. In this book, we explore our mutual love of the nine patch block. She designed some amazing quilt patterns from nice and basic to more complex, but unlike a regular quilt pattern book, you know where it says, quilt is desired. I quilted them all and I show you how I do it and give you ideas for quilting your own. Now I know that's a lot of tips and quilty eye candy in one video, so I put together a handy resource sheet which has all the tips, the quilty eye candy, and quilting diagrams so that you can really apply those to your quilts. If you want to find out how to get that resource sheet or my new book, Nine Patch Revolution, just check out the description box below. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving them in the comments and be sure to subscribe because you never know when I'm coming back with another video. Oh, actually you do. Next Monday. I'll see you then. Happy quilting.